So tell me a little bit about the history of the church. Well, uh, what I remember, and I'll just go from my perspective, is um, we started meeting with a small group in 1985. Um, I grew up in traditional church. We started going to Rocky Mountain seminars, and that's how we first kind of got familiar with the um, discipling ministries. We, um, we came back from one of those seminars, started looking for a group that was making disciples. And uh, in April, around April of 85, we met uh, met with a few people. Um, I believe some of them had been affiliated with the North Irving group, which was another group. And, um, and so we started, we actually went to a meeting with them, decided, hey, we want to start imitating the disciple ministries in Boston and, and some of the things that were going on that we heard at the Rocky Mountain Seminar. So we, uh, we started meeting with that group in Arlington in 85, like I said, around April or May of 85. And um, that continued on until uh, for several years, and then in um, so eighty five, pretty much eighty five till about eighty eight. And during that time, uh, I know the North Irving Church was also being discipled out of Chicago, and our small group started being discipled out of Boston. And so by eighty eight, both those groups were kind of at different places. But in eighty eight, February of eighty eight. Um, some of the leadership from Boston came down, including Gordon Ferguson came down and basically challenged. So there were pretty much three groups that met at that meeting in February of 88. A big blizzard was going on and uh, <clears throat> they called the group from San Antonio to come up. So we had San Antonio, the North Irving group, and then our small group that was meeting over in Arlington. All three of us came together, uh, met over here in Irving, and um, basically was challenged to all of us come together and start meeting at the North Irving building. The North Irving group had a building over in, in Irving. And uh, so we all, and then the San Antonio group was challenged to, to move up to Dallas. And so all three of those groups pretty much came together. There were a few people from maybe from Oklahoma City and maybe a few other places, but basically it was those three groups. And at that time, each group was maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 to, 30 to 40 people. Um, maybe, you know, again, different sizes. I think our group was around between 30 and 40, North Irving, I'm not sure. And then the San Antonio group maybe was a little smaller than that. But I want to say maybe 20 people may have came and moved up from San Antonio. And so we all started meeting together in North Irving, uh, at the North Irving congregation. And like I say, that was in February of 88 when that meeting happened. So shortly after that, we all started joining together. And then in, and started being discipled. Actually, at that point, by Gordon, I believe, started coming in and discipling the group. He'd fly in and disciple the group, um, you know, whenever he could. And, and uh, started really learning, growing. And... Then in 89, we sold the building, started meeting at the airport inn over in Irving, which was a hotel there we started all meeting in. And then um, and Gordon still coming in, came in. And then ultimately, there was a change in leadership for a small period. Somebody else was coming. And then ultimately, it was decided Nick was going to lead the team. And I'm not sure the exact dates, but somewhere in 89, because the team actually came in in 90. Um, and I believe they all came in around March of 90. Um, and that was... Uh, that was a pretty neat experience. They came in full of zeal and ready to, you know, fire everybody up and say, "Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna blow this thing out." And so it was a lot of fun, challenging. Um, that was so. That was March. Then during that period between March and May, we started all the people who were here. Kind of went through life talks. We got with leadership and we had some challenging uh, discussions about our life, about our discipleship, and where we living out, really living it out. And uh, I'll just say. My meeting was with uh, Gordon Ferguson and Mark Harris, and it was a life-changing discussion for sure. And uh, it was a lot of fun and, and, like I say, challenging to my heart and to my character. But uh, definitely grew from that and learned. And and uh, so then by May of 90, um, one of the cool things was, I believe our little small group, and we were down in the Oak Cliff area, we were, I think there may have been, I don't know, 20 or 30 of us. And... We're trying, we're going to have three over 300 just from our group at the inaugural service. Uh, I don't really know what number we ultimately ha ultimately had, but I knew, do know at that service we had like 750 people at that service with about under 100 disciples. Uh, had a group of 750 come to that inaugural service, which was very faith uh, building and inspiring. Um, so a lot of things, a lot of great things happened. And then that first year was just. Um, very impactful. A lot of a lot of people became disciples. A lot of a lot of studies. Pretty much studies all the time, and um, and ultimately, then during that first year, I, I believe a lot of us went to L.A. that summer 
uh, that first summer for the seminar out there. We didn't have one locally, but by 91, um, I think it was about May of 91, we ended up sending out three teams to uh, Houston, San Antonio, and New Orleans. And uh, so almost a, a little over a third of the group of the church here in Dallas went out on those mission teams, which again was a pretty pretty dramatic, uh, had a pretty dramatic impact on the church just seeing that many people leave. Uh, but it was again, it was faith building and inspiring to see those teams go out. And, um, and then we had our first seminar here in 91. So, um, you know, it was very, very, uh, a lot of life changing times, you know, that, those early days. And, um, and then, you know, from that point, um, just continued to see the church grow and see great things happen, um, you know, throughout, throughout the DFW area. I could say and listen to that all day. Uh, <laughs> what are some uh, What are some fun uh, personal member memories that you have? Uh, you know, around the early '90s when the things got going. What are some cool things you saw happening at that time? Uh, you know, I think the I think just sitting down with people, studying the Bible. I mean, I could tell you some interesting stories just about studying the Bible. I mean, uh, you know. The studies were challenging to people's faith. I mean, no doubt about it. To to really make you think, um, and I, you know, and, and again, it was challenging to me. I actually was baptized in '88, uh, right after the, the the call for all of us to meet together. I'd been coming. I again, I grew up in traditional church. I was kind of thinking, well, I know what I'm doing, but really, you know, I think sitting down through those studies and actually going through those studies with other people challenged me and to look at myself. And I think. Um, and I think that continued to, you know, on and like I say, you sit down and study the Bible with people and, and just to see people's um, hearts change. Uh, again, I mean, people that, you know, one minute they were like really angry at you and like, you know, actually said in a study where a brother said, I hate you, uh, right towards the end of the studies, you know, because he was, he realized where he was and it really challenged his, his uh, denominational beliefs. Uh, to the point that when he really came out to how he was feeling, it was like, I hate you guys. And I uh, worked through that. The guy became a disciple. The guy is still a disciple today. And uh, pretty amazing. Uh, again, a lot of, several situations like that that I can think of, just people whose story was just, I mean, their life changed dramatically. Um, and I think, you know, just the boldness of people to get out, share their faith, uh, knock on doors, um, just, you know, wherever you went, you were trying to meet people and, and invite them out to church and, and really help them uh, have a relationship with God, which was very, again, very faith building uh, to believe that we could make a difference. No, absolutely. <clears throat> you know, I think we, we, we started off sending a lot of those teams, and recently we've been sending out more teams. Uh, what is some, you know, what is some advice that you have for anyone who's looking to go on a new mission team or, who, you know, thinking about dreaming to go pursue God's dream for them? You know, it's interesting because I think, you know, for us, uh, obviously we, we stayed in Dallas when a lot of other people left. I mean, people that were very close to us, uh, you know, we went to San Antonio and, and you know, and, and kind of the call, you know, I think we had the heart to go, but the call for us was to stay and help build the church here. And, and so, you know, I think, I, you know, I saw a lot of people go and I've seen how that impacted their lives. And, you know, I think it's, it's again, it's inspiring to see you know, what God has done with a lot of those people. And again, San Antonio, even in the early days, I mean, we had people that were part of that early group between 85 and 88 that went to Boston. Uh, they moved to Boston. Some of those people now lead churches in other places. Um, I mean, God used that. Even those early days, when we really didn't know anything about what we were doing. We were just trying to figure it out. And uh, God, some of those people are still in Boston. Some of them came back to Dallas. But God used their hearts and their faith to make an impact in so many places across the world is, is really encouraging. Um, I guess my advice would be just, you know, trust God and, and make sure you get a lot of advice. I think that was one of the things that we learned early as disciples, too, is, hey, get advice about things. Don't just, you know, go off and, and do things. And so I think that was, that's been a, again, that's a life-changing teaching that's helped me in my life with my kids, my wife, my family. I think just having a heart to get advice and 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 I, that's that's probably the biggest advice I give is get advice, you know, be open, be humble, and ask for input in your life because it'll make a huge difference in in everything you do. Awesome, no, I appreciate that. Um, you feel like uh, there's anything else you want to that you could think of that would be you know important to share, kind of in our church history, things like that. You know, I think there's been a lot happened since then. Obviously, you know, um, we have. 
we weathered some storms, which was, uh, you know, definitely I think the church, the kingdom worldwide weathered, weathered, weathered some storms. And I think, you know, uh, definitely, you know, it, it was a matter of just, hey, you know, being solid on what you believe and what, you know, what it is that God called you to be. I mean, I believe God called me to be a disciple. And I think, you know, you just got to hold on to that even when the storms come and say, hey, I'm, there are certain things I know that are right that the Bible says very clearly I need to be doing. And I got to go back to those things, those basics and say, this is what I need to hold on to even when the storms come. And the rest got to make clear. I mean, it's just a matter of, of, of again, being being solid on the things that you know God calls you to and, and the things that you're not sure about. God will clear them up if you just hold firm and, and don't lose heart. And that's, again, that's, I think God has done tremendous things in the last, you know, 25 years being part of the Dallas church and, uh, you know, actually was able to serve as an elder for a while, which was very encouraging and seeing, you know, how God has, has raised up elderships in Dallas and, you know, and kept kept us with good leadership. Uh, you know, definitely the Assad stepping in and, and leading the church when they did, I think was perfect timing. I think God orchestrated all that. I think, again, it, that, that kind of came through stepping back and getting advice from outside leadership, which was, I think, uh, a lot of wisdom on the leadership as, as a whole to say, hey, let's get some outside input about even how we're doing as a leadership group. And I think just the humility there, God blessed. And I think since then, God has continued to, to help the Dallas church thrive. So it's very encouraging. I appreciate it. Thank All right, so man. <laughs>